Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are back with another Genshin Impact playthrough session, and this is going to be a very, uh, very brief one, maybe, depending on how this process goes. I am currently about maybe six hours away from a plane flight. I'm going to be going to Canada for a month and a half to spend time with my girlfriend for the rest of her summer break before she goes back to school, and generally, I'm just going there to kind of see her. I haven't seen her since Christmas. It's been like eight months since I've last seen her, so I basically wanted to showcase the last bit of content that I wanted to get through before we tread into the new territory because the next time i stream it is going to be with the release of the sumeru region and the new characters and all the you know the new archon quests and dendroculus and all that other stuff so it's very exciting so a couple things that i want to get through the first thing that we're actually going to get through overall we're going to jump into weekly bosses so we're going to start with andreas i'm sorry we're going to start with devalin and we're going to work our way down written in the stars get him shinyan Easy clap, dude. God, I'm so glad I they put Shinyan in here because this is like my first true experience with her as a character. At least maybe it's maybe it's just my build, but uh, I actually really, really like her. And this is a terrible first drop. Holy shit. Now we're going to go to Andreas. Okay, this is actually Andreas, okay? Get him! Bop! Damn, dude. This is the last weekly boss before Sumeru. Come on. Give me something good. Dream solvent prototype chunk. I'll take them all. All right. You know what? We take those. Dream solvent. That's my 107th dream solvent. I have no fucking clue. Like, I literally don't know why they give us so many dream solvents. Now we have two spirit lockets and a bad artifact. Unlucky. Foul legacy. The devouring deep. <laughs> You shut your goddamn mouth, Paimon! I've contemplated saying be quiet, but I'm too uh I'm too much of a Giga Chad for that. Alright. We gotta assert dominance. No one asserted dominance by saying please be quiet. Decided by destiny. Let's fucking go! Holy shit, dude, I blinked and his ass disappeared. Alright, come on! another one dude another dream solve in 108 shit yo if we get to 110 what a great milestone to reach before sumeru also we got one of each boss drop bad artifact copium artifact for like a noel or some shit i don't know all right age daha my perpetual disappointment dude big damage big damage alert okay wait Okay, I thought Kaya was stuck, but Aisha was just like on top of me, so I couldn't do anything. I was like, oh no, Kaya, he's stuck. All right, here we go. Bruh, you're kidding. <laughs> Third time's the charm, 109. Bro, if we get one more dream solving, I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do. That's gonna be insane. Transfiguration. Oh, frostbite. Free. Oh. Let's fucking go! Yes. We beat her first try before her freaking final attack. Good shit. That was so close, dude. All right, let's see. Come on. Give me something good, Captain Kaya. Holy shit! Bro, we got four dream solvents. 110. 110. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. I, I, oh my God, dude. I, I wish I could have gotten a couple prototypes instead, but God damn. I'm wondering if I want to flex on Kai, team Kaya, but if I'm willing to like potentially get killed by that attack, if I don't have an electro character, do I want to risk it for the biscuit? I think I will. And if not, then I'm going to witness the Muso no Hito Tachi, just like Tomo did. Okay. Oh my god. Holy shit, that was close. <laughs> In your dreams. Oh time as Alright, that's unfortunate. Only Easy clap. I swear to god, if it's another dream solving, this is actually gonna be insane. Bruh, there is no fucking way! There is no way! I got five dream solvents this week five out of six Sheesh. yo my freaking dev mode scripts are back ladies and gentlemen let us return to monstat we have some lore to get into real quick have you heard about the chasm the chasm 
did something dreadful happen again? That's all you guys talk about. Some of you guys might be realizing, obviously this is gonna be on YouTube. So this is like far flung into the future or in the past by the time you're seeing this. But for those of you who are in my chat right now, you guys will probably know that there is a current event going on right now known as the Evermotion Mechanical Painting, which focuses on the Court of Fontaine. We get some Fontaine lore here, which was very exciting. Did not realize they were gonna give us a bit of lore with the character in question, Felix Yog, a person from the Court of Fontaine seems to be having some some trouble so i already did the six puzzles there's a seventh puzzle that i believe i have to do so i am going to be talking to him again but i wanted to kind of refresh and feature the lore factor of this on the channel because again this is what i focus on i focus on lore i focus on world building i focus on characters and like story oriented content and uh i'm glad that you can at least talk to him again for him to go through it again because uh this is actually getting me super excited for fontaine like ridiculously excited for this new region so this is felix he he's he's known as a daydreamer he's turning tavat with this like mechanical thingamabob all right so bravo all six motion mechanical paintings now are return to us now then all we need to do is splice them together all of them why of course all six smaller parts are united as one together they will form a gigantic and beauteous ever motion mechanical painting yeah i was wondering where the painting aspect came in because like it's just a bunch of gears as of right now come come all we need to do now is join them up why don't we cast it or anything no no not at all my machines are not some hastily cobbled together amalgam of scrap Every part is wonderfully, intricately meshed together. Kind of like, uh, you know what? Never mind. I've never been the best at analogies. I swear Xavier stole all that talent and rhetoric for himself. Either way, give it a go. I'll be interested in to see, I guess. Okay, so we got to do the painting first. Okay. Ah, so we got to put them in the right position. Oh, we got to rotate this too. That looks good, right? I think that looks good. <laughs> That was easy. A minute and a half. It, yeah, my brain takes a while to work, okay? But we got it first try. Perfect. Why? It's lovely. Skilled in both mine and hand you are, and more so than I could have expected to. Ha! Huh, I do recall that several ludicrous manuscripts from the Steambird described you as as go on so they did mention the steam bird we did so last year when i read the character lore before inazuma came out mona i think was the first character that mentioned the steam bird because i think she's in one of the articles with, that talks about astrology we came to our conclusions early that the steam bird must have been like a newspaper for fontaine so yes go on uh, as a straight shooting knight errant who prefers to let their blade do the talking ah uh, how ridiculous and foolish those reporters were. How much ado they made about so little. After all, who are you if not a sharp, smart, humble, and well, straight shooting knight errant? When I get the time, they shall hear from me. Oh, yes, they will. Oh, right. Please take this particular device. You can take it out for a little leisure, should you well be at leisure. As for me, I've got to start raising the mora. I'll need to travel to Liyue. Hmm. A potential rerun event, most likely. If he's going to be traveling the seven nations of Tavat. I guess that's a, a furnishing for our teapot. Oh, it's like the, I think it's the, the painting that we just made. Ah, it's right here. Ever motion mechanical painting. Nice. A special artwork crafted by a dreamer from Fontaine. This dreamer sought to use this artwork to show off the abilities of his marvelous invention, the Kinesis Core. The Evermotion mechanical painting is made from many interlocking parts. So if you so much as initiate a small amount of movement, the painting can remain in automatic motion for a long period of time, allowing you to safely leave it unattended for a for a time. If it were to be sold on the market, it would surely be quite the popular product. And uh, I think that officially caps off the event for us. Yep. There you go. Nice. I already got all the rewards before, so I just wanted to finish off and see how that last puzzle played out. Yeah, so I, I wanted to come back and talk to him about these particular points of interest. For those of you who are interested in lore, maybe they missed out on this part or they didn't bother looking at it. I've already read through these, but I wanted to kind of like illustrate them for the sake of content. So the Daydream Club, what is this? Hmm, let me think. How do I just explain this? So generally, a club is a loose assembly of people sharing the same interests. But the Daydream Club is bound by something 
more than interest. It is to say dreams. However, these dreams are often criticized as unrealistic. So we said to ourselves, why not just call the club daydream? And that's what we did. As for us, the members of the club are naturally daydreamers holding to our daydreams. So that's really cool because essentially what I imagine the daydream club is, is just a group of visionaries and like innovators. The first person that came to my mind when I thought of this was Steve Jobs. They mentioned like, oh, we hold on to our dreams and they're super unrealistic. It was unrealistic to think that we would ever have a phone, a buttonless screen only phone. And then we had like the iPod touch and then the iPhone became a thing. Or even like the concept of the internet was thought to be unrealistic, impossible. It would never happen. That's a pie in the sky daydream project. And then it eventually comes true. So that's essentially what this is because Fontaine is like a land of like thinkers and doers and people fine. who have like ambition and goals in regards to entrepreneurship and things of that nature so and it talks about a bunch of different people as well so it's just a group of like innovators who are who have like these big larger than life plans and ideas that they want to bring to fruition but they seem so outlandish that they'd never be possible but those kind of people are usually the people that kind of make those into possibilities. Yeah, they're essentially inventors. Tell me more about the members of the Daydream Club. Ah, we are not great in numbers, but our members are all extraordinarily imaginative. I, Felix Yog, wish to create an energy source that can operate in perpetuity. And I want to use purely mechanical structures to build it, requiring no materials that regular people can't handle. Next up is Xavier, the genius artist and creator of the film camera, which by by the way, is an exquisite product. I, I'll tell you that. So I recently just did a world quest with Xavier that was built off of a random commission in Inazuma where Xavier was making like a samurai play. Also, Xavier was the one who helped us out in Tatarasuna with the Mikage furnace when we first got to Inazuma. But basically, after finishing that film quest that I did for him, he wants to travel the seven nations and he wants to be like regarded as like the best filmmaker so he wants to go to like sumeru and like natlin for inspiration and his first stop was inazuma so um it's really cool because like xavier has been in the story and we've seen his efforts already happening and it's cool that he's telling us like xavier's like grand master plan of being like tevat's greatest filmmaker However, his hidden talents are more stirringly developed in the films he creates. We believe with all of our hearts that this man will become the greatest filmmaker in Tevat. That said, I haven't heard of him since his journey to Inazuma. Honestly, what has he been doing? And then there's another one of us, Mr. Garcia, who's working on a numbering machine. Well, he does zone out from time to time, but trust me, he's a natural born mathematical genius. I don't know what the numbering machine is, and I don't know if that's like a fucking calculator or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> a computer? I don't know. Oh, is that another quest? I haven't gotten that one yet. Ah, uh, like a coding, like a coding uh, machine or like a Turing machine. The first computer was basically a calculator. Interesting. Oh my God. Okay. I already, d these motherfuckers are too advanced. They're the next Conria. <laughs> oh no. They're actually like on the baby steps of what Conria ended up doing. They were like, yeah, let's just create mechanical machines of mass destruction. And they're at the baby steps right now. They're like, all right, let's make a computer. Let's make a calculator. Let's make like perpetual oh, energy yeah. that we can harness for all time. Those small ideas become monumental. And then you draw the attention from the heavenly principles. So... Hmm, I don't know about that, dude. And last but surely not least, we have the brothers, Mekantre and Babis, with their boundless energy. They are working. This is fucking huge, bro. This is fucking huge right here. And again, what I just said about Conria, they are working on a supersized cannon. Their schematics state that they shall fire missiles that can fly high enough to touch the stars of Tevat while carrying people inside. I'm telling you right now, that cannon is what is gonna get us to Celestia. Clip it and ship it. It is August 19th, 2022, less than a week before version 3.0. I guarantee you, we are going to use this supersized cannon that can carry people 
that shoots us up to the stars of Celestia, uh, up to the stars of Tavad. And what's up there? Oh, look at that perfect fucking view right there, boys. It's gonna shoot us to that island right there and like version 10.0 or some shit. And there you go. Also, it's kind of funny that it can shoot us to the stars because the stars are a lie. The sky's a lie. It's, we're gonna hit the top of the dome of this freaking firmament world that we're living in. So I'm calling that right now. And that's an even bigger red flag. It's like, bro, why, why are you guys making stuff like that? What, what are you doing? What are you doing? I assume that this is like a primitive version of like a rocket ship, but like, I don't know, man. I actually think this is gonna happen. And I think this is gonna be something that we use in Fontaine or through one of the people like, I, I just feel like this is going to be an actuality in a few years. And this is going to get us to Celestia. If not, Venti and that freaking statue over there is going to get us there somehow. Anyways, they're still searching for the right fuel for the project. But their daydream is the craziest that I've ever heard. Are you serious? Of course. We're absolutely serious about our daydreams. Haha. <laughs> I mean, isn't Daydream Club a perfect name for us? If you're interested, do visit the town of Petrachor in the court of Fontaine. That's where our members gather. That said, if you were there now, you'd probably encounter a rather downcast pair of brothers. Downcast pair of brothers. That doesn't sound very, very good. Also, Petrachor, we have heard of before. Apparently, it's confirmed to be a town, and it's a town surrounded by water, because if you come to the ascension material for the hydro hypostasis, it actually mentions, even if it were to flow into the surpassingly pure waters of Petrachor, this drop drop of water will likely resist assimilation as strong as mercury. So yeah, Petrachor is going to be a town in Fontaine that we eventually go to. So crazy lore here. This has me super excited on top of like the lore we've already gotten from like R Endora and Rodea and like the assassins and the, and the, and the lock folk and the hydro archon and all that stuff. So pretty crazy shit. And it's so crazy that they're giving us more Fontaine lore when we're about to get Sumeru too, which is crazy. Do you know what Petrachor is? I do not. It's the scent that we smell when it rains. Ah, I didn't know that Petrachor was an actual thing. That's really cool. And then we mentioned that we have seen Xavier in Inazuma. Ah, fabulous, fabulous. Tatara Tales shall make Xavier bless my heart, famous overnight. Mark my words. But honestly, I'm just really relieved. I thought he might have, you know. <laughs> that said, since things have been dealt with, why hasn't he sent one letter back? Whatever. I'll send a letter back to Petrachor later to tell Mikantre the news so that he can stop worrying. Yo, know, Xavier is out there putting making making moves dude making absolutely goaded moves with his uh filmmaking tatara tales basically is the tale of the mikage furnace from his perspective if i'm not mistaken but yeah just wanted to feature the fontaine lore there because i thought it was really interesting now we're gonna shift gears this is the last time we are going to see the golden apple archipelago for this version so i just want to try to make the most of it and see how much we can get through by the end i guess in general i just want to say overall i think this golden apple archipelago was entertaining and enjoyable for the story aspects and the, the event aspect. I did make a video kind of just getting into like what I did not like my overall problems with Golden Apple, which was I felt like it was too bloated. I felt like they were trying to do too many different things with the four characters and the four different islands and the four unique versions of puzzles and the bajillions of puzzles on top of that, on top of the world quests, on top of general exploration. And it just kind of ruined a lot of the pacing for me. I know a lot of people who are not going to be finished this version of golden apple because they were so overwhelmed and it is really unfortunate you know this was a lot of people's first golden apple so if it was your first golden apple maybe you're willing to overlook all of that because this is your first time experiencing it but after experiencing 1.6 last year's golden apple and just recently editing all of that content again i have a very raw and very fresh mindset of the first golden apple compared to this one i loved kazuha's island for the story i love ima Natrite keep for the story i loved shinyan's island for the story i loved mona's island for the story but the overworld the collectathoning the constant constant puzzles on top of puzzles on top of puzzles it just just felt overwhelming and it really kind of like dampered the overall pacing i feel like i enjoyed the story so much because i chose to focus on story and not on exploration but last year you were able to do both and the pacing worked really well and the story worked really well and the exploration worked really well and the puzzles worked really well but i feel like they focused more on quantity than quality here 
The quality was there, but it, it's disproportionate to the amount of busy work they threw at you, in my opinion. So it sucks because I, you know, you'd really want this to be a big step up from the first Golden Apple. And that's kind of what I think like they went for. They were like, they kept Golden Apple normal, but they just like put all of this other stuff on top of it. And I feel like that kind of undid it because they were trying to focus on so many things at the same time. So in doing so, it created an overwhelming sensation for people where people didn't want to go and look for chests or find everything or do all the puzzles. They were just willing to do the bare minimum of, I just care about the characters and the story quest and the conches so I can get the free costume. So unfortunately, that is kind of how I feel about this golden apple. I liked it for the story, but everything else felt a little too ham-fisted for me. And you know, hopefully next year's golden apple will be more refined than this one because at this point i feel like the expectation is that we're gonna get one a year anyways those are just one man's opinion and if you liked golden apple nothing i can say can take that away from you everyone's opinions are different everyone's opinions are valid and uh yeah so we are going to tackle the meatball world quest first a lot of people have been asking if i've done this yet so i assume that this is going to be pretty interesting it has a bit of lore from what i've heard too so go talk to mitoboru aka meatball meatball a wave rider who claimed himself to be the mightiest pirate ship seems to have something to discuss with you that's a very questionable considering that akodomeki was the most famous like bandit pirate of Inazuma and his ship is actually in the Seirai region actually like the Seirai Maru this is Akodomeki's ship that like crash landed here after like everything that like went down with the shogunate 500 years ago with all of them and whatnot so unless Meatball is like a fucking manifestation of that ship I don't know if he's the mightiest ship in the seas ahoy there <laughs> you're finally here I've been waiting for a long time. Even my deck is getting burrs. Yeah, where's the squirrel? Like, that's another thing, too. We saw these two in the beginning of the of the event, and then, like, they just kind of, like, did their own thing or whatever, or they just weren't present at all. But this boat, does this boat even have a deck? <laughs> this is a dinghy at most. Ha ha ha. Who would have thought that I, the notorious pirate ship commanded by Wait. Akodomiki, what? would one day end up like this? Wait, what? Am I actually, did I just like low key call that? <laughs> I was like, wait, there's no way you could be the most, like the mightiest ship. Cause you're like a little freaking like raft. You're like a little boat. I don't see, I don't see, here's the thing. I don't know if this is Mirage's playing games or if this is literally like a manifestation of the boat's like essence. I don't fucking know. So you're a big pirate ship? Uh. But who's Akodomiki? Oh my god, they actually said the character's name for the first time ever. The only other time we've ever heard Akodomiki's name was in the Echoing Conches last year, where his pirate crew got shipwrecked here. And that's the first time we ever heard Akodomiki's name ever. I would say too, thinking about Akodomiki, I almost feel like Beto is the modern day version of him. Cause like, that's Beto's title now. Beto commands the seas now. And she has all the respect in the... In the prestige and the renown and the respect from people so it's kind of cool how like beto is kind of like the liue version and not even just the liue version because she travels between inazuma and liue so i think that's kind of cool too what you don't even know who akodomiki is so he was a famous pirate who went against the shogunate 500 years ago and then like him and his entire fleet i think got like obliterated on the seirai islands after the raiden shogun killed kapatsi or the thunderbird who was going around and causing mayhem after rue died so like it just caused like a domino effect that just fucked that entire region up i think i may have heard of them akodomiki zaimon zaimon yep defender of seirai yep the name of the most feared pirate ever to sail the seas. Yeah, there it is. Oh, who would have thought? Holy shit, I can't believe it. Nope, the name doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> all right, Mitaboru, you told us to come here, so tell us, what is this all about? Wow. And like another thing too, for those who don't know, the catch is uh, Akodomeki's weapon. So like, that's another thing that's tied to him. It feels so weird being called that all of a sudden. Uh uh, you see, as I said, I'm here because I drifted here. From Seirai Island, perhaps? So I'm thinking my original body must be nearby. Nope. <laughs> 
It feels strange using the word body. <laughs> but I do need to find it as soon as possible. Dude, this is crazy. If this is like the fucking mind of the Seirai Maru boat or the Seirai Maru ship, <laughs> sir, I'm so sorry, but your body's crashed and burned. I've lost track of how long I've been sleeping here, but I'm certain my companions will still be waiting for me. I need to find my body. Oh no. Get ship shape and return to them as soon as possible. Oh my God. Uh, sir, I don't think he realizes that this is 500 years later and his entire crew, including his captain is dead and his body is crashed and burned in the remnants of the Seirai Island region. So I can't imagine this ending well for him. Also, this is giving me big full metal alchemist like Alphonse vibes. Like I gotta get my body back. Right. <laughs> Hi, but I can't make it there on my own. After all, a talking ship is just a ship. <laughs> it still needs someone at the wheel. Yo, I got you, fam. Let's make a deal. You help me find my body, and I will help you find treasure in return. Yeah, no deal. Mihoya already sent me on like a fucking busy goose chase of two primo gems every 10 minute for solving like an hour long puzzle. Treasure? No, Paimon, you fool. I'm a pirate. It's not worth it. All. It's not Don't worth let the it. Pirate ship's intuition or some kind of sixth sense. Either way, the moment I woke up, I could sense that this area is filled with valuable treasures. You have my word. A pirate ship always <laughs> finds its treasure. Ah, or may I be blighted with barnacles. Barnacles. Let's see, Meartis. <laughs> Do we have an accord? Let's help me to borrow. If he finds his body and we get treasure in return, everybody wins. I had a feeling that might swing it for you. <laughs> Teehee, Paimon, teehee. So, will you help me or not? We'd be delighted. Great. Well, there's a place I wanted to go to as soon as I woke up. Based on my pirate ship's intuition, there be some big treasure hidden there. Yo. Arr, let's head there and search for it. All right. Time to set sail. Let's go. Go to the place Mitoboru senses. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. Ah, oh, it's the last time we're going to hear this beautiful music for an entire year. We got to we got to soak it up as best we can. Yeah, it's crazy. The next time we're going to be here is before version 4.0 before we go to Fontaine. If last year and this year is any indication they've set the precedent now for expectations, I guess that'll be nice, right? Most of you guys who are in here who experienced this golden apple for the first time will be able to compare it to next year's and next year's golden apple will be someone's first. So, you know. Oh, oh, is this where the first, the, the half of the ship is? Cause I know that the there are some halves of the the original ship that got shipwrecked here for the first settlers in the last year's golden apple so uh yeah i think that's what we're doing because there are two ships here but they mentioned it was akodomeki's pride and joy but it wasn't the seirai mon oh hold on actually i don't think it was seirai maru then i think it was the original boat that shipwrecked here now that i think about it yeah because seirai maru was akodomeki's personal ship but this boat was given to those pirates from Akodomeki. They said that it was Akodomeki's pride and joy. Okay, so it actually makes sense why he's here now, if that's the case. So I don't think it was Seirai Maru now. Let's see. Yeah, this is where the is conch was really last year. The right place? Um, there's nothing here but a shipwreck. This shipwreck was here last year, too. Oh, Mitaboru had better not be lying to us. Guess it's time to go back and ask our friend a couple of questions. All right, treasure voyage. Talk to Mitaboru. How did it go? Did you find anything valuable? Some shipwreckage. <laughs> Mitaboru! <laughs> there's nothing on this island except for a shipwreck. What kind of intuition is that? Yeah, it's half of his body too, which is even scarier. What? No! Impossible! That's impossible! Ah! I know. It must be because I've been sleeping for too long. <laughs> and my intuition is not as sharp as it once was. Uh-oh. Uh, as the saying goes, nobody's perfect. <laughs> and certainly no boat's perfect either, uh -huh. right? Cut me a little slack, huh? Yeah. The next place will be the one. I'm sure oh, the next God. place will be full of treasure. Oh, I can already see where this quest is going, bro. Be. No more playing tricks on us this time. 
Damn, Paimon, what do you mean it better be? You have my word. Sheesh. But, um... The next place is a little far away. Uh-oh. And I'm not sure of the precise location. <laughs> uh-huh. All I know is that it's somewhere northwest of here. Yeah, wild goose chase. Let's go. But there are so many islands in the northwest. Oh, you gotta give us a little more than that. Wait a minute. If you mean one of the larger islands, there are only two of them in the northwest. The island where musical flowers grow? Musical flowers, hmm? Hmm. Indeed. Among the sounds I'm sensing, I hear music drifting across the sea. But not just the sound of music, no. There's the non-stop cawing of ravens, oh, too. Okay, Fischl's Island prob- wait, both? To be precise, the cawing is coming from the east, and the music is coming from the southwest. All right, so what's in the middle between those two? The east and the southwest. So you're hearing two sounds? Ugh, where could this darn treasure be? But where can you hear the sounds from both islands at the same time? Yeah, it's in between them. I just got to see my map. Oh, you're right. Yep, that's exactly what Paimon was thinking, too. Ah, then let's go over and take a look. Ha 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 You know, I must say, it seems you two are quite close. I really do like the voice acting. Like, it's so weird that they gave voice acting to this ship, but they didn't give voice acting to Agathia and the other Fatui during that world quest. I really wonder what their thought process is for why one world quest will get voice acting and then another one won't, or why they just don't do them all or do none of them. Like, I really wonder, like, what's their thought process on, like, what their criteria is for voice acting. You bet! We've been on loads of adventures together and found lots of treasure before. Aw, uh, Paimon's the best companion anyone could ask for. <sighs> Aw. If only I'd been able to speak back when we were sailing on the sea, <laughs> then maybe I would have been able to communicate with my companions just like you two. Oh, so he wasn't conscious? You seem to have so much fun together. Mm. I'm a little jealous. Damn, his ship... I, I already know this isn't going to end well. <laughs> All right, time to find the center location of these two big islands. All right, so it's between... Oh, it's right there. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to do the legwork, but I, I guess they just did it for me. Hope you guys don't mind, but I'd rather take the water route just because, uh, you know, the music is not... This is the last time I'm going to hear this music at the very least, so... I feel like it's, uh, it's nice to just be like a send-off moment for it, you know? Such such good music too. They did a lot of good renditions too, like the nighttime renditions for some of the music. Fischl's Imanakreish like keep music is so goaded. Like I think that's uh, I, obviously that's the one that stands out the most in this event. But damn, music is really good. Stands out a lot from the last years too. So they did a like a, like I said they did a lot of cool renditions of the original track, so they made it really fresh too. But, uh, I don't know. I don't feel as sad now that this golden apple is going away, number one, because I feel like the first one was a bit stronger. And number two, last year, we really had hopium. We really had to just hope that they would bring golden apple back every summer. At least I was, I felt strongly that they'd bring it back. A lot of people thought they wouldn't because they never did events, reruns back then. It wasn't until the last year after Inazuma came out, we got Theater Mechanicus again, we got Lantern Right again, we got a dragon, another Dragon Spine event. That's when people were more confident that we'd see events yeah. again. This is right in between both islands. There better be some treasure this time. <laughs> yo, Paimon is big mad right now. She's like, yo, this fucking, I'm about to make firewood out of this freaking boat if there's no treasure here, god damn it. I'm like, damn, Paimon, chill out, my god. This is why you don't bargain with Paimon because then she gets like really upset. It's like, Paimon, what are you gonna do? You gonna eat him? See, it's both halves of the boat that he's he's uh, coming back to. Actually, you know what? He might be the front end of that boat and then these two other parts might be like smaller versions, I guess, I don't know. Well, surprise, surprise. <laughs> There's nothing here either except yet another shipwreck. Well, half a shipwreck anyway. Come on, Paimon, put two and two together. Two halves make a hole. Was there no treasure this whole time? Wait, 
both times me to borrow that use your brain treasure, it turned out to be shipwrecks <gasps> does that mean this is his body damn paimon took you long enough jesus man it is possible not only did it break into two pieces mm -hmm. but the parts are also completely tattered hey why don't we take a picture of the boat and show it to me to borrow wait then what oh I swear to God, I better not have to go and take a picture of that other half when we were just there. Then he can confirm whether it's his body or not. Okay, I was about to say, I'm not doing this. Why couldn't you come to this conclusion sooner when we were at the first one? You know? All right, let's, uh... Y'all want to see a dead body? <laughs> we have the pictures. Come on, let's go back and show them to me tomorrow. Uh, I just thought that, that was just like the first thing I thought of. I'm like, bro, we're taking a picture of what's essentially this boat's corpse. I Me swear tomorrow. to God, if, if Kazuha just fucking died, I'm going to be pissed off. There you are. How did it go? Did you find something? Let me guess. <laughs> you found a huge... Bro, I'm so pissed. I heard something hit the ground, so... Oh. A huge load of nothing. Pause, champ. Oh, I dropped the cannonball again, didn't I? Damn. Same as last time. Just another shipwreck. Maybe they're parts of your body. Hello again. We took pictures of them. Take a look. Is this a painting? <gasps> I didn't know you two could paint so well. Huh? Just look at the detail. <laughs> Down to the smallest blade of grass. It's just like the real thing. God, this is like a ride in Shogun moment when we took a picture of her and she was like, who's that person in the picture? It's like, that's you. It's like, oh, so you created a copy of me? It's like, no, it's it's just a preserved image of what you looked like at a point in time. That's how technology works. We didn't paint this. We took it using a camera. God, what's a camera? Yeah. 500, yo, boomer moment right now. 500 years, dude. A lot happened since then. So it was drawn by a machine through some high-speed mechanism. Sure, why not? So even the mighty pirate ship has never seen a camera before. Yeah, old, am I right? What are you trying to see? It's not like I haven't seen similar things before. It's just like the hell paintings in all of those legends. Hell paintings? But anyway. What the hell? <laughs> What's that thing in the middle of this picture? No pun intended. <laughs> That's the shipwreck we found. Take a look. Uh, Could it be your body? <laughs> hmm. Ha! Impossible. Where did this sorry ship come from? It's a total wreck. Uh-oh. You may not know this, but I'm considered as the mightiest pirate ship of the Akodomiki fleet. Hold on. My hull is made of the best wood found on Seirai Island. Holy shit, is he actually Seirai Maru? Another thing too, Akodomeki commanded a fleet of 10,000, which is way crazier than the Alcor and the Crux fleet. So Beto's got some uh Beto's got some work to do. But uh with that many boats, it's like the only one I can think of at this point is Seirai Maru. The edges of my frame board were refined with folding saws so that the pieces fit together perfectly. Mm. Then they were joined together and reinforced with large rivets, making <laughs> me indestructible. Uh-huh. There's no way I could end up like this. Unless you met your fate at the hands of, like, the Raiden Shogun or some shit. But your intuition led us to shipwrecks twice in a row. Yeah, third time's a charm. It's probably because of the special bond between all boats that draws us to one another. Before they run aground, that too. these ships may well have been self-aware too. The remnants of their spirit is most likely what I sensed. Interesting. Anyway, this can't be my body. My body's probably docked at a hidden port somewhere in these waters. All right, Meatball, you're in a little bit of denial. You'll see. My side panels are painted with the finest lacquer. Arr, what a majestic sight I used to be. Once we find it, you'll realize how different I am. Okay. From your picture. Meatball really said I'm built different. That sounds great. <laughs> we should go for a cruise together sometime. Oh, God. Arr, that's for sure. I can't believe I sensed the wrong thing twice in a row. 
the lack of maintenance has really taken the wind out of my sails <coughs> as far as my intuition goes. You have to apply cork once in a while if you want a long lasting uh, voyage. I'm sorry, what? That goes for people too. You have to apply what? <laughs> this is a good, wholesome Christian stream, Meatball. Have some tact. What the heck is cork? Is it the glue that holds all the parts of the ship together? <laughs> okay. I love how they just reinforced it. You love how they pronounced the L too. They were like, we have to say caulk. Otherwise, people are gonna fucking run us in the ground. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with that, Paimon. Ha <laughs> ha! Paimon, you're a funny one, aren't you? No, but you're not that far off. <laughs> Damn. Caulk is the stuff we use to fill the gaps between the planks to stop water from leaking into the ship. It's made of rubber or something. Every once in a while, you gotta caulk the gaps as part of the maintenance. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Please tell me I'm not the only one who like <laughs> laughed at this. Oh my god, dude. I'm about to get banned on Twitch. <laughs> exactly. Which reminds me. I got oh. some good rest when you two went on that little adventure. I'm sure I'll be able to sense where the real treasure is now. Oh, uh, this is so funny, especially with chat. Third time's the charm. That's what I said. Time to get serious. We'll definitely find something this time. I'm unsure hope so. Anything will do at this point. What's wrong, Paimon? You don't sound like you believe me. Anyway, this time, I sense something in the southeast, on the sea surface. It doesn't feel like something very big, and that raises the chances of it being a small but valuable item. Ha ha ha! Yeah, I just want to say that we are, we're all a, a pretty mature and uh, well-rounded group of individuals here at twitch.tv forward slash murder of birds. We enjoy a little tomfoolery every now and again, you know? So uh, I just hope all of you guys uh, understand and appreciate those, those good times. Come on, let's go. That's so funny though. Ah! Bro, bro. You are fucking kidding me. You are- I completely forgot about Kazuha until just now. You're fucking kidding me, dude! Bro, last year on Act 3 of Golden Apple Archipelago, the same shit happened to Amber. I jumped off a cliff and the cutscene triggered before I was able to time opening my wing glider. And so my character just kept falling and Amber died. And then it transitioned to a cutscene. And I was like, oh, I guess, I guess I'll go fuck myself. And they literally did it again with Kazuha now. So I think Kazuha has died in this event like four times, maybe. Yeah, poor Kazuha, man. And that's what happens when you get all that character development and lore. All right, it builds up for your death. And so I just reenacted it before it actually happens to make the immersion a lot more enjoyable for my community. Mitsuru felt like it should be somewhere around here. Oh my god, we did this shit last year too! Could it be this reef? It looks kinda small. Uh, but let's go check it out anyway. Surely you found something this time. We did something like this last year where we were looking for like little remnants of uh Treasure, actually. Have I finally convinced you of this mighty pirate ship's razor-sharp treasure hunting sense? Razor? Where's Razor? All there was was a bird's nest. <laughs> so, yeah, technically there were a couple of eggs, but <laughs> that was all. Just, uh, just the two, you say? Really? So this is the valuable treasure you were talking about? <clears throat> Paimon, you may not be aware, but the mightier the pirate ship, the longer its voyage at sea, you see. Uh-huh. Eventually, the only food available on board is dry fish. At times like this, a couple of bird eggs on a <laughs> reef nearby can easily become the most valuable treasure to a crew. Damn. Yo, Meatball, you drive a hard bargain, dude. Meetaboru! Your excuses are so lame. Okay, fine. Oh, but how the heck did I end up sensing eggs? <laughs> how strange. Did Akudomeki like eggs? Was that like his favorite food or something, along with fish? I swear I sense something. But there's nothing else on the reef. 
No, there's like a crash. Isn't there like a wreckage behind you? Could it be these two planks? Bruh. Seems like they were used as a shelter. Bruh. Hmm. Paimon wonders where they came from. Paimon, open your damn eyes. Wait, this plank. Wait, wait, wait. Oh my god, please. When you test the plank newly, thank you. Huh? What the hell is happening? Okay, I just want to say thank you so much, Hoyoverse. I got really worried right there because last year when Seirai Island came out, they had these black text screens, but they didn't let you continue manually. They would just go. So I was like, oh no, I'm not gonna be able to read it. But then they have the little continuation at the bottom there. So I really appreciate that you guys implemented this and I hope you continue to do it so I don't have to stress out about reading shit. I know I'm probably like the only fucking person who reads shit in this game that's a content creator but besides that that's besides the point anyways a feeling hits you the moment you touch the plank a newly painted hole glowing in the warm rays of the sun dozens of hands pulling toe lines a powerful force dragging you downward faster and faster until suddenly boom a tremendous impact followed by the sound of something heavy descending and floating up again suddenly you are surrounded by the cold freezing and suffocating all of a sudden you realize that this is the sea and that's where you'll be drifting for the rest of your life Life. Jesus. Whoa! Then comes the hearty laugh of a man. Shrine Maiden, it's another mighty ship. It deserves a nice name. And he is answered with a helpless sigh. <sighs> I hope this ship will bring you back safely, so I shall name it after this place. Wait. What happened? What was that? Wait, was that Mitoboru's memory right there of being, like, created? Holy shit! I know where this plank comes from. Traveler, Paimon. Holy moly. What you saw just now was my own memory. Holy shit, dude. That's so cool. That was really immersive. I like that. It was my first time sailing on the sea yep. after it was built. Yeah, I was to say. The crew used greased planks to create a <laughs> slipway, then launched me into the water. Yeah. The thing is, it's really hard to control the angle at which the bow launches onto the water. It could very well break if you're not careful. Which is why most people choose to launch the ship sideways instead. <laughs> Who would have thought we'd be getting fucking boat lore and Genshin Impact, dude? <laughs> this is crazy. So, 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 another thing too. They mentioned Shrine Maiden, which is the Azaz Shrine. That might have been Hibiki. The Shrine Maiden that Nico always talks about or Neko always talks about at Azay Shrine. Because that was 500 years ago. And I feel so bad for the cat because they're still waiting for Hibiki to come back. And they don't realize that, bro, it's been 500 years. I I, I think they're dead. And I think that was Akodomeki talking to Hibiki. Because that was like back during Seirai Island 500 years ago. These two planks... Or should I say, Holy shit! these two side panels, the they so good. must have been the first parts of my body to make contact with the water. Damn, that's a big memory. That's a good, it's a good thing he sensed this. Mitaburu, um, if your side panels are here, does that mean... Maybe I crashed into the reef here and was shattered to pieces long hmm. ago. And maybe the sensation I had when I woke up wasn't some kind of treasure hunting intuition after all, but me responding to my own body. There I was, making fun of that shipwreck, blissfully <laughs> unaware that I was actually making fun of my own body. <laughs> That's funny. Ah, how embarrassing. <laughs> that is kind of funny, though. We don't know that for sure. Uh, maybe. Maybe your body is still in one piece. Yeah, these two planks are probably just... Uh, your um, siblings. Uh, uh, part of your <laughs> family tree. Your, your relatives that didn't make it out. Yep, could share the same roots. Even if it's not, there are loads of shipwrecks Yeah, I'll copium here. right here. These planks probably just belong to one of them. But... I mean, we gotta we gotta keep it lighthearted for him, you know. Paimon is right. There are other possibilities. I uh, thank you, both of you. Aww. By the way, Mitaburu, wasn't there something about your name mentioned in that memory? Yeah. Do you remember your name, now? bro? If he says Seiraimaru, I'm literally gonna have like a heart attack. Oh, it's a pity. 
But I'm afraid I didn't see much more than you did. Of course. I still can't recall my name. Nobody ever remembers their name until the very end. Kagotsu Robe Ishin didn't remember his name until the very end. It's such an anime trope, bro. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, it's not too bad. You and the Traveler can keep calling me Mitoboru. It's a good name. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. Paimon picked it after all. Oh, boy. So, Mitoboru, is there anywhere else you want to go? What he should be like is like, hey, what does Mitoboru mean? Like, what's the translation for that? And she'll be like, Meatball. Hello and he's again. like, I fucking hate that name. Why did you name me Meatball? <laughs> Although I can sense two more places, I fear it will be the same situation as before. No treasures, only some driftwood. Yeah, Bosatius was another one. He didn't remember his name until the very end. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Aw, see, there you go, Paimon. It's not all about the treasure. Arr, but I swore there'd be treasure in this deal for you. Hey, the treasure were the friendships and memories we made along the way, Meatball. I see what they're doing now. That that's the whole thing. Hey, it's okay, Meatoboru. We're friends now. Friends don't do deals. Well, in that case, whether it's treasure or not, let's hope you two can find something rather than nothing. Hey, whatever the booty, we'll take it. Ha <laughs> ha! Good. Let's go to the closer location first. Hmm, I like this. I like this quest. Bro, I can't believe we're getting, like, lore from the past and, like, Akodomeki relevancy. And this is kind of like Inazuma lore, technically, too, because that's where... Mitoboru is from, and that's where like all of the lore regarding Akodomeki Zaimon and Hibiki are from Let's too. Let's start by taking a look along the coast. Hey, hilly trails, get away from that! Back up! Oh my god. Uh, you guys saw that, right? That one hilly trail just like ascended to Celestia right there. It really just like went flying upward. Sure enough, no treasure here. Does it really matter? Paimon knows that. Paimon just can't help feeling a little disappointed. That's all. Oh, boy. There's a wooden sword here. It looks like a children's toy. <laughs> that it's per Oh, my God. Paimon's first one-star weapon. Let's go. It's perfect. Hey! I mean, you don't do anything. Help me out for once. The thing I sensed. Could it be this wooden sword? You know what Paimon reminds me of for any Honkai gamers out there? She reminds me of the elves from Honkai. And I'm like, in Honkai, the elves help you fight. But in this game, Paimon's just like a useless elf that doesn't do shit. And I'm like, you should fucking do something, all right? So I don't know. I don't know if Paimon's just like supposed to be like a reference to the elves of Honkai or if there's more going on with that. But that's what I think of. I'm like, bro, why doesn't Paimon ever help me fight? That's crazy. Sure. <laughs> it couldn't be a wooden sword i think it actually might be the wooden sword Ooh! Oh my god you hear it dude i love the the sound immersion a feeling strikes you when you touch the wooden sword waves several meters waves several meters high slam against the side of the ship the cracks caused by the impact from the battle are aching there are noises all around you everywhere the enemy jumps onto your deck making the ship lurk give up zymon surrender now and i'll spare your life surrender impossible at that very moment the man holding a barbed spear looked surprisingly calm and determined i am zymon the deathless oni of sayer wait Wait, Akodomeki is an Oni? I did not know that. Like, at all. What the fuck? <laughs> Wait, what? I am Zymon, the deathless Oni of Seirai. I am a proud seaman, and I will never live in the mercy of my enemy. What the fuck? Dude, you hear the fight? Neither of them see the far end of the battlefield. Neither of them see the purple lightning. Oh my god. Their fight. So, bro, I heard the thunder crack and I was like, oh, that sounds like the thunder. I, I didn't say it, but I was like, that sounds like the thunder crack of Seirai Island when we first get there. So they're fighting right now while Kapatsu's losing her shit. Neither of them see the thunder purple unfurling like a bird's wings and engulfing the sky. There is a blinding white flash, a roaring shockwave that overturns everything. Your body is thrown into the air as you are stripped of all sense of directions. Only an endless thunderstorm follows. Holy fuck. 
I don't know if like Seirai Island and like Akodomeki and all of those people were affected by the Raiden Shogun killing the Thunderbird, right? Because you can actually see the fucking damage that she, like her Musono Hirotachi, it's theorized that like the shape of like the, the island is where like the remnants of like the battlefield of how she killed him or how she killed the bird. But like, I'm wondering if, if, if Kapatsir's death is what just happened there with the blinding white flash which means uh the Raiden shogun has been busy whoa that lightning was really powerful holy shit <sighs> what's this memory about this uh seirai island getting fucked up and like a battle going on with a bunch of that was probably akodomeki and the shogunate actually now that i think about it because like he was a bandit and he he rebelled against the shogunate hyman could still feel her head spinning <sighs> Shiver me timbers! I remember <laughs> now! The sea battle between Akodoku yes! and the Shogunate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the lightning that came at the end of the battle. Yeah, I don't know if the lightning was from Kapatsir or if it was from the Raiden Shogun, like, killing the Thunderbird. Oh, what could it have been? Yeah, what's left of the Thunderbird's wrath. Oh, so the Thunderbird was already dead then. Will blow me down. Hmm. Just a fraction of the Thunderbird's wrath, and yet still so powerful. Oh yeah, we, we fought that wrath head on with the Thunder Manifestation. That's so cool, dude. This is so fucking sick. I love this shit so much. Wait, but the lightning came from Seirai Island. Mm-hmm. Traveler, have you been there? Yep. Do you know what happened to the island after that? Yes, we do, actually. You tell me to borrow what happened on Se Dude, that's crazy! No, I can't believe it. It was a truly terrible thunderstorm, it was. Ah, oh, I don't have the words to describe the horror of it. We stood up against the Shogunate precisely because we did not want our homeland to be ruled by them. Yeah. We wanted to protect the people of Seirai Island. Wow, this is so cool, man. I know that I'd learn about this lore if I had already read weapons and artifacts, but the thing is, guys, like, I try to focus more so on my experiences in-game before I go to supplementary content like that, so I'm pretty sure they already explained or revealed through weapons and artifacts that Akodomeki Zaimon was an Oni or you know all the stuff that I'm learning about now but because I play this game a very specific way I'm still excited that I'm learning about it now through this versus through reading it because that's still gonna be interesting when I read everything you know we made an enemy of the Shogunate for the sake of Seirai Island mm -hmm. and in the end oh shrine maiden why wait Hibiki wait so that thunderstorm was the reason I... The reason I drifted here. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I was terribly injured in that storm. Yeah. My whole body was falling apart. It took all my strength to get here. Aw, Mitaboru. But hmm. what about the wooden sword? What does this have to do with it? This wooden sword is made from my broken timber. Oh, damn. Shiver me timbers. That's why he said that. Zaimon once seized a sword-wielding Magu with his barbed spear. The Magu drifted here with us. <gasps> the wooden sword was probably crafted by local children imitating the Magu sword. Oh my god. This is what explains Magu Kenki was here last year. Holy shit. Wait, wait. Did, did the Shogunate sick Magu Kenki on Zaimon? And then they like, the thunderstorm happened and it blew everything else out of the water and Magu Kenki drifted here damaged. Remember, Magu Kenki was damaged last year along with the remnants of like whatever pirates and ships were casted away into the sea after that, after that battle. And the sword is based on the little kid in the echoing conscious last year that was like who called him like the general and thanked him for protecting the people and all that stuff so this was from the kids from last year's echoing conch wow dude i'm baffled that they are so good with the lore with this the body of the mighty pirate ship Holy that once fuck. fought against the shogunate now reduced to a children's toy of all things <laughs> ah, my mind is awash with strange and complex feelings bro motherfuckers are gonna be watching my reactions to version 1.6 on youtube now knowing the shit that we know now like a year later like dude this is so cool it's actually i think my time capsule video is gonna be more enriched by all the shit that we've known since then because of stuff like this because they like they harken back to their old content so well so 
Mitaboru, should we take this with us? After all, please. It is a part please! of you. Please, dude, I want that as a quest item. No. No. There's no point taking this now. <laughs> Young scallywag. God damn it. The little landlubbers got me this time. Oh my god, this is incredible. Bro, they mentioned Akodomeki Zaimon. They mentioned the shrine maiden, which I'm expecting is Hibiki. They mentioned the Thunderbird Kapatsir. They mentioned the Shogunate. They mentioned Magu Kenki. This is so incredible. Bro, if you don't... Dude, I could... Dude, I feel so... It's so sad that so many people just don't give a shit about the lore and i get it some people are like oh well there's a lot of like padding to get to this good stuff but it's like i don't know man i honestly think of genshin impact like reading a book like if you like books and storytelling through reading i don't see why you wouldn't enjoy genshin and this is coming from someone who doesn't remember the last time they read a book <laughs> you know but like i i almost kind of feel like this is a the best version of like reading material for me because like I'm reading a story and it's almost like buying a book and falling in love with a story and reading it through and like finding value in every page. You know, that's at least how I enjoy the content of Genshin because like I'm invest, I'm like grossly invested in the world. But like, I never thought the shit that we've known little bits and pieces or the stuff that I've known little bits and pieces about through Inazuma and Seirai Island and the very small details of like Akudomeki and stuff like that. I never thought that they would really go back and be like let's flush out that lore that we kind of have out there and make it a part of the game now i like really 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 love this although it's disappointing now that i remember the truth somehow i feel relieved too mm -hmm. at least i know what happened i won't be deceiving myself with my wishful thinking any longer let's go the only thing i'm worried about now is my old mates who drifted here with me I wish I could know how they're doing. I'm sure they'll be fine. Okay, you're, you're, you're talking about the other boats, right? Like, not the other people? Because it's been ages. Oh, let's hope so. Okay, there's one last place. All right. I can feel it. It's the last piece of my body. You could almost say, my body is ready. I can feel it in my bones. All right, let's see. Go to the place he senses. Is the last place somewhere around here? I most sure. The precise location seems to be in that house on the beach. Wait, why a house? Uh-oh. Don't tell me some land lovers <laughs> turned me into furniture. Uh-oh. <laughs> We're about to find out. There are a lot of wooden planks on this conch house, but they don't look like what we're after. What the heck? Yo, someone just literally made their crib. Oh, could it be the one on the stone? Oh, is it like one of those like flute instruments? What is it though? A board made yeah. on two wooden strips with a wooden mallet next to it? This is a musical instrument. This is a musical instrument? Oh, wait. Uh, can it really make a decent sound? Oh, I thought it was like one of the blowing ones. No, this is a xylophone. Why don't we try it out first before giving it to me to borrow? Yo, you know what's really funny? The Golden Apple Archipelago that played initially last year had like xylophone instrumentals. At least I think that's what the instrument they were using was, was like a xylophone. And now they have an actual fucking xylophone in the freaking event. <laughs> yeah, that that's about it. <laughs> The intact wood strips made a cool and crisp sound, while the damaged wood strips only made a muffled, heavy sound like ordinary wood. Hyman's pretty sure this instrument hasn't been repaired in a long time. Hmm. Well, this must be the last fragment of Mitaboru's body. Come on, let's go tell him. Damn. You're back. How did it go? Did you find anything? Show the wooden musical instrument. This is indeed my last piece. But what the festering fish bait have they turned me into this time? Sheesh. We think it's a musical instrument, but it hasn't been fixed for a while, so you can't really play anything with it. Is that so? Ah, a pity to be sure. Musical instrument. <laughs> I never imagined that my broken body could be used to play music. <laughs> it makes me think of my old mates. They used to sing when the mood took them. They'd sit by the beach facing the campfire. Uh, hey, what kind of sound does this instrument make? Uh-oh. Why don't you give it a try? Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> it hasn't been caulked for a long time, so it might not sound 
sound as good as you're hoping. He's like, I sound like shit. What is this? This is the this is disrespect. It doesn't matter. Satisfy my curiosity. Mm. Just strike it and see what happens. Curiosity killed the cat, Mitaboru. Strike the intact part of the instrument. Do, 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 do. Oh, the thunder's back. The feeling strikes you as you hear the crisp sound of the wooden instrument. You have been drifting for a long time and you are seriously damaged. You can't sail any further. Rather than pain, you are overwhelmed by regret. Me hearties, why are you looking at me like that? Is it because you have to go back without me? Don't cry. How can we say goodbye to it when we are crying? One of you says. Everyone begins to sing. Ah, if we're going to sing, don't be quietly wiping away the tears. If you're gonna sing, smile and be happy. Ah. Aww. So they found a way back. Aye, but since I was so bad- They had to damaged, leave him behind. It was the most I could do to bring them here. There was no way I could go back with them. I see. Ah, oh, it gladdens me hearts to know that they are safe. But I... Even though I said goodbye to them, I still can't help thinking, what if I could have gone back with them? Yeah, so I guess this is part of the conch lore. So like last year, they had the lore where like the, the teenagers found a way through the fog. They rang everybody up together and then everyone else, like the inhabitants managed to all get off the aisle, like to leave. And I guess that it was at that point that they were like, oh, our ship is still here. And we've had like good memories on it, but we have to leave it behind because we can't take the remnants of the ship back with us, you know? Oh, how I wish we had returned together. With them, I would have been willing to go anywhere, hmm. no matter how dangerous. There are so many grand adventures for us to go on. So many treasures out there in the world waiting for us to discover them. Why did I have to be left here abandoned like this? Hmm. I could do nothing but watch them leave and embark on a new journey without me. Okay, so uh, I'm going to channel the essence of Meatball whenever I use a Wave Rider from, from this day forth. From this day forth, Meatball will be with us in spirit, even if it's not actually him. All right. They said goodbye to you with a smile. Thank you for helping me remember all of this. Aww. Thank you kindly. I'm afraid, though, that they seem to have taken most of the treasure with them left bro i fucking called it dude finding your memories is the most important thing that's the true treasure i i knew that was gonna be the the moral of the story yeah in a way all the things you sensed really were invaluable treasures to you at least hi it's true tis a shame i can't repay your kindness as a ship there's only so much i can do but um in the future if i ever need your help again We'll be here for you whenever you need us, Mitaboru. Right? <laughs> you mean whenever we need him, Paimon. I can't swim that far. Fantastic. Thank you both. And if you ever voyage in these seas again, yep. I will be your trusty companion. There you go. That's what we meant to say. Oh, my God. Didn't Mitaboru say he wanted to meet us? Oh. Let's go find him and see what it's about. Ooh, the final treasure. A bunch of people mentioned. So that was the first quest that we just did. This is a follow-up to it. So I guess they added on this world quest a couple days later. Ahoy, here you. Hey. I thought you'd be too busy flying around the islands with those wings of yours. Damn. Bet you've long forgotten yeah, there you your go. old mate Mitaboru <laughs> sitting there slowly soaking away in the ocean. Damn, aka, bro, you did that entire fucking event without your boy. We're here now, aren't we? So you said you needed our help. What's up? It's not that important. Remember when you helped me find the missing pieces of my body? Yeah, we still haven't found out his name yet. How can I put it? I'm not sure if it's because I fulfilled my wishes. Or if these waters are slowly diminishing my ability to talk. Recently, I find myself sleeping most no! of the time, rather than staying conscious. Bruh. It's because of the machine with the mirages. Oh, no. Bro, when the machine wears off, the Ima Naturite's Keep is going away. The Flower Island is going away. Kazuha's Island's going away. Mona's Island's going away with the freaking Mondstadt situation. And I guess Mitoboru. I cannot, bro. This is some bullshit. I see. So it's because of some contraption that I became your wave rider and could communicate with you. Oh, does that mean that once the effects of the machine wear off, 
Mitsuburu won't be able to talk anymore? We gotta do something before it's too late! Ha <laughs> ha! There'll be no need for that, Paimon. Aww. I am quite content that I had the chance to talk to you at all. I guess he's not dead or anything, but it's just so... You know what I mean? It's like... It's like... <laughs> It's kind of crazy and morbid to think about, but it's like not having consciousness anymore. It's kind of like Kagotsurobe Ishin. He's still a, he's a sword, but he's he's no longer what he once was. He has he no longer has sentience, you know. And in a way, that's kind of like dying. The more I think about it, for me as a ship to have gotten to talk to you in the past few days, Damn. it really is a wondrous thing. The stuff dreams are made of. Aww. But no, I need to ask you for one more favor. Whatever you want, my dude. You guys know how there's like already a blue Sealy that exists out of the options that you can pick? What are they going to give us for Fontaine? Like for that event? Are they going to give us a darker blue Sealy? Because I was going to say, I'll get the blue Sealy and name it after Mitoboru because this light blue on him reminds me of the light blue Sealy. You know, like how I'm going to name each of my Sealy after the previous. So my new green Sealy is going to be named Ruka Devada. Just like how my current purple Sealy is named Makoto. And I'm just like, you know, darker blue? Or are they just not going to give us a new one? Anyways, tell us. Remember when I told you that once we found my body, I'd take you for a cruise? Well, it seems my body was reduced to a slew of sorry shipwrecks. Yeah, unlucky. And most of the treasure was taken away, leaving nothing good for you. But this time, I swear, as a mighty pirate ship, there be treasure ahoy. Oh, damn. And a fine treasure at that. Or else may I be strangled by seagrass and fed to the fish. <laughs> Just trust me one last time. I don't know, Meatball. That's kind of a, that's a big, uh, that's a, that's a tall order to follow. Well, since Mitsuburu probably won't be able to speak soon. Yeah, might as well do it for him, even if it's not actual treasure. And since there really is treasure this time, let's go! Paimon, you never change. Time to set sail! All right. Arr, come on then, me hearties. Time to come aboard. Aye, aye, Captain. One final treasure boat ride for the, for old time's sake. Oh. As you speak, the area around you becomes shrouded in fog. Uh, why did I get so foggy? <laughs> uh, that's right. Oh, wow, look. There's a lot more lights on the sea. Those oh. lights are from Inazuma. I haven't seen them for many a year. Oh, shit. Follow them. They look just like fishing lanterns. I feel like I'm back in the port at Seirai. With the fishing boats lining the harbor. Interesting. Night. Are they leading us to actual... Imagine we're going all the way back to Inazuma right now. Even pirates don't get to go on adventures every day. When he had free time, Zaimon would take us out fishing. Of course he would. He would fish with his Oh my spear. god! I never saw him miss once. You have the catch with you, don't you? <laughs> oh, I've sensed it for some time now. Ah, those were good times. I'm sure he's still sailing across the sea, charting a course towards his dreams. Yo, fuck you, Akodomeki Zaimon, for liking fishing so much. I fucking hate fishing in this godforsaken game. God, so they did mention the catch. That is Akodomeki's weapon. So, you know, he's a polearm user, but like, fuck, man, I hate fishing. I hate it so much, and I had to fish... 2,000 fish for the name card. God, and then and then it's like, oh, no wonder I had to fish so much for the damn catch. It's because Akudomeki loves fishing. Oh, oh, I just remembered. I've got two things to tell you. <gasps> First of all, I've remembered my name. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, my God. So, Mitsuburu... No, wait. Say Raimaru. Um, so, uh, Mr. Chip... What's your real name? The maiden of Asase Shrine named me Koseki Maru. Whoa! Most of my mates were from Koseki Village, and she hoped I could take them back to their hometown. Oh! Koseki Maru. Hmm. Paimon still prefers me to borrow. I like that but name. Koseki Maru is a nice name, too. Koseki Maru. So he was named after a village, whereas Akodomeki ship was named after the entire fucking region. What a fucking giga chad, dude. <laughs> Deathless Oni actually fucking goaded. But I, I failed them. 
If only I could have been stronger, I might have been able to survive the thunderstorm and make it back to Koseki Village with my friends safe and sound. What an incredible revelation of lore. I'm not even upset that it's not Seirai Maru. I actually really like that it's not Seirai Maru. Because it's like, that's a little too important. You know what I mean? But he was a part of the fleet. And it wouldn't make sense either. Because literally, Seirai Maru's fucking corpse, if you will. Like, the remnants of the boat was here anyway. So I was like, oh, maybe it's like the front part of the boat that got knocked off. And like, went into the ocean. And then it ended up at the Golden Apple. But I actually prefer this a lot more. Also, we got all these shipwrecks. What's going on here? Treasure! Oh, never mind. God damn it. Well, we're getting close to treasure. But in a few breaths, thunder and lightning began raging. Oh! Where'd the thunder come from? What the fuck is happening? Be careful! This thunderstorm is just like the one on that day. Kapat's here? What? And so were the Inazuman lights we saw, too. Oh, my God. This all happening because of me. Festering fish bait. Bruh. I'm going to drag everyone down with me. Come on, me too. Uh, Koseki Maru. Koseki Maru, come on, on bruh. Sail through the thunderstorm, Koseki Maru. Come on, Paimon. Help your boy out. Hi, you're right. I am the proud Koseki Maru. Let's go. Pirate ship under the command of the mighty pirate, Ako Domiki. Hell the yeah. Of Seirai, this is so dope. Bones, and the shrine maiden of Asase gave me my name. I have sailed the seas for decades, never <laughs> once leaving my friends behind. This is badass. Even when fighting the strongest foes, I never feared nor faltered. A little thunder and lightning can't stop me. Ha, watch me. Oh, he's making his way to his body, actually. Look at that. That's kind of cool, actually. Wow, and it's cool. The Asay Shrine Maiden named him, too. So I wonder if that was Hibiki that named him. <sighs> that was close. Paimon was sure we were going to sink. Yeah, so that was the thunder of the uh, thunder manifestation of Seirai after the Raiden Shogun killed the bird. Kose Kimaru, you're amazing. That's so based. A talking ship is still just a ship. <laughs> the traveler's superb sailing skill was what saw us safely through the storm. <laughs> Do you want to go again? <laughs> I'd rather not. I'm afraid I may have triggered the thunderstorm. These waters are less stable than they once were. But we've arrived. Traveler, Paimon, the treasure is right up there. Bro, we literally started here. Isn't this the place we first Bro! visited when we were looking for treasure? There was nothing here but half of Kosi Kamaro's hole. I fucking knew it. I was like, I said it earlier when we made it to the second half. I was like, please don't tell me we have to go back to the first half. And lo and behold, here we are. I am certain that there's treasure up there this time. It's, what did I call it again? Hmm. It's the intuition of a mighty pirate ship. Wait a minute. You said you had two things. Yeah, I'm still us, waiting for right? the other. And the first one was that you'd remembered your name. What was the other one? <laughs> I thought you'd already forgotten. I'll tell you when you come back. Why do I feel like I'm going to go up there and when I come back down, he's not going to be able to talk to us? Surely the treasure should be near Kosi Kamaro's shipwreck. Let's go and check it out. I honestly feel like that might happen. You were in a perfect position to tell us what the second thing was. Why would you make us go and do this thing? You know why? It's, it's to tug at the heartstrings and realize that he's gone Into when we come wind. back. What's different though? Oh, oh, that's different. <gasps> oh my God, what the heck? Oh my God, is this so? Please, please don't fucking do this to me. Dude, this shit looks so cool. <laughs> wow, there really is treasure here this time. Huh. Oh my God. Oh my God, dude, we got a furnishing of Koseki Maru. Come on. Please, are you still there? Okay, you know what? I'm using the fucking wing glider now because I'm not having Kazuha die twice on me because of these stupid cutscenes. Kazikamaru! Kazikamaru! I fucking knew it, dude. I fucking knew it. His lights are out. Like, l figuratively and I guess literally. We found the treasure. Look, it's a model pirate ship. Your intuition finally worked this time. So, 
What's the other thing you wanted to tell us? I fucking knew it, dude. I fucking knew it, man. They always be doing this shit in freaking games and anime and everything, man. Kose Kamaru? God damn it, bro. I'm so pissed. The ship named Koseki Maru does not re respond. Koseki Maru can't speak anymore. Uh, but he said he'd tell us when we returned. That was the plot talking right there. That was foreshadowing by mine. <laughs> Fuck off, bro. I, I saw that shit coming from a mile away. Kosikumaru, you're a big fat liar. Aww. <sighs> Damn, dude. All right, here we go. Storm Braver, a model of an Inazuman style pirate ship. It brilliantly captures the image of the vessel cutting through the sea. They say that if you look closely enough, you can see the following words on the ship hull's profile. Secondly, the people of the sea never. S Bro. Bro, what the fuck, man? The people of the sea never say goodbye out loud. What a fucking, what a badass. That's so fucking tragic, man. We helped him out though. We hooked him up. Mitoboru will be with us for all time. All wave riders are Mitoboru, okay? I'm making an executive decision as the unofficial official ghost rider of Genshin Impact, all right? It is what it is. I don't make the rules, okay? I just enforce them. Damn, dude. I can't believe that. That was a phenomenal world quest like exceptionally well done world quest i did not think they would give us as much lore as they just did and it's lore for things that have just been kind of like in the air at least for me i have like i said haven't read weapon lore haven't read artifact lore yet voice acted thank fucking god that would have made it so much less enjoyable if it wasn't voice acted i appreciate the voice acting again don't understand why they decide to voice act some quests like this one but then the agafia quest line with the other fatui agents they decided not to even though they had their voices in the conches don't really understand the the, the reasoning behind that i wished it was just consistent across the board if it was up to me like i would just prefer everything in the game be voice acted Damn, man. Holy shit. That was great. That was phenomenal. I really, really loved that. Koseki Maru alongside Seirai Maru. We got uh, Akodomeki Zaimon lore, the Deathless Oni of Seirai. We got some Shrine Maiden mentions in there, a Sei Shrine mentions in there, the Shogunate, Kapatsir, Thunder Manifestation, the Seirai region. Stuff that like we really kind of got like during like version 2.1, 2.2. And then we just kind of moved on from there. A lot of the lore was embedded in those world quests. But damn, man. That was phenomenal. That was incredible. I really enjoyed that. Thank you guys so much for not only like mentioning and, and, and telling me to go through going through this quest on stream. I really appreciated that. And uh, I, I'm just glad that I managed to cover this on the stream before I leave for, for Canada. So yeah, I really loved it. Hope you guys did too.